Hello everyone and welcome to another PWN Design Studio tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to export your atmosphere as an HDRI image to import into other programs like 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, uh, any GPU render, or anything pretty much. So what I have set up here is just a um, Evermotion V-Ray room. I really love this model because it lets you get a good understanding of how your atmosphere's indirect lighting is working. And I have my atmosphere set up the way I would like it here. Um, lots of indirect lighting so it takes a long time to render. Volumetric and everything. Um, so I'm not going to go through setting up an atmosphere for you guys because you can use any of the atmospheres that come with view or any of your own personal atmospheres that you may have made um, while using view. But I will show you how to export it and then use it in a different program. So from view, assuming you already have your atmosphere set up, um, you can also use clouds, by the way. Uh, you can use clouds to uh, get a little bit more realism in your uh, HDR image. Just go to File and Export Sky. And from here, um, you in most cases, you want to choose Preserve Full Sky Lighting Range. However, you don't have to. I recommend doing it, especially if you're going to be using an HDR form format, because what it's going to do is all of that light data is going to be preserved. Um, sometimes when you export your light or your sky, not your light, your sky from view and you don't check this, it'll either be too bright or too dark or the colors are going to be off and it's not going to look the same as how you had it in view. So if you click that, um, then it'll preserve all of that and it'll look almost pretty much one for one. Um, and also depending on what program you're using, it might have uh, different requirements like HDR only uh, or EXR. I think most GPU renderers can use both. I'm using Indigo, so EXR is usable. However, I already have mine exported, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, and then choose the supporting geometry like a cube, an uh, octahedron, UV sphere, or octosphere. Um, and you're going to have to know what pro what uh, geometry HDR or what geometry your program supports for HDR. Uh, Indigo supports uh, spherical, so UV sphere, and I think I can use octosphere if I wanted. Um, some game programs or most game programs will probably have you use a cube um, or even a UV sphere. You're just going to have to know what you need um, and then choose the resolution. And since this is a very basic um, atmosphere, I'm not going to use a really high resolution image. If you have clouds um, or maybe trees in the background or other objects or mountains or whatever, uh, maybe not mountains, but like clouds or something else in the background, um, you might want a higher resolution or else it's going to look blurry because uh, it's just essentially a small image at that point. Um, and then choose whether you want um, automatic aspect ratio, which is what I have set here. And what that does is it just automatically sets the Y for you. So you set the X and then it will change the Y to keep it uniformed um, and so on and so forth. When you're done, you just hit OK. And then when you hit OK, if you look down here, I'm not going to hit OK because um, it didn't take a very long time to render it out, but long enough that I don't want to wait again. Um, but when you hit OK, it'll show up down here where it says Global Transformation in most cases. Um, it'll just have a green bar saying it's uh, exporting the sky. And when it's done, you should have your HDR file. Uh, next is importing it into your favorite renderer. And I have Cinema 4D up right here, but I'm not using any lighting in here with it. I'll, I'll get into using HDR images in Cinema 4D for your scenes uh, in a little bit. But for now, I'm using it inside of Indigo. And this is my HDRI image inside of Indigo. And you can see it has um, soft shadows because of the uh, GPU render. It does a really good job. And it's capable of casting shadows um, from these objects. And it looks really good on the outside, looks really good on the inside. Um, and we have a good um, uh, array of colors and the light and everything. So it's really warm right here because I have a really warm um, of decay amount and then it's really light over here where there's less light and so on and so forth. So it looks pretty good. And that's pretty much how you import and uh, or export and import or maybe not import, I haven't showed you the import. Pfft, <laughs> silly me. Well, that's how you export your HDRI. Now if you want to import it, say if you're using Indigo um, using Indigo Renderer, you would open it up uh, inside Cinema 4D or whatever with your scene and then you'd find the background settings 
right here and usually it'll be set to none which looks horrible um, and it looks like it's gonna close on me or maybe not um, uh, you can choose environment map or sun and sky if you choose environment map that's where you can choose your HDRI image and that'll be under texture you just browse to it and right here you can see the supported um, file formats there's EXR right there and you just load it up it'll open and then it'll load in and then you just render it out simple as that um, and I'll show you how to do that in Cinema 4D in just a second um, but I'll show you how to do it inside a view so here is uh, my view file or scene it's the exact same scene just a little bit closer to the couch um, and I'll go ahead and go to atmosphere editor and I'll change this to environment mapping and we have all the same settings right here uh, that I had before I changed it to environment mapping but views going to automatically calculate these when we load in our environment map right here it's gonna be under the effects tab what you want to do is hit this uh, a load button right here which looks like a little picture with an arrow just your typical load button inside view and then again just hit the arrow down here and then find your image there and the file formats you can see which ones are um, supported right here you can see all of them so there's EXR um, TIFF uh, all of these files are compatible there's even HDR right there <clears throat> and you just open it and then right here it'll, it'll ask do you want to automatically set up your scene for image based lighting in most cases I just hit yes and then I adjust it um, how I want it if it doesn't look right so I'll just do like a little quick preview over here and it looks like it's a little bit too ambient so I'll just increase it from ambient to uh, sunlight um, in some cases depending on the file you have this can look really really wrong when you start taking it really high amounts towards sunlight and I'll see if it does that which it's not it's it's doing it accurately and pretty well actually you can see those uh, shadows are starting to come in right there I'll just put it back down to 65 where we had it before and that looks good now everything else you can change as well it's gonna be the same thing you can choose global radiosity so on and so forth you just don't have the Sun and sky tab right here you do have fog and haze which I usually almost always just take off uh, because that can add um, a detrimental effect to your scene and I'll change the glow intensity to just 100 percent don't need it any much higher than that and I'll just keep the quality boost at four percent or at four and volumetric light nothing in here don't really care about that um, in the effects you can change the U and the V of it so if we wanted to we can uh, change its location so I'll change this to let's change it to five and if we look over here after the preview goes through hopefully oh you know what we might have to uh, let me let me zoom out actually so I'll put this back at zero whoops and let me zoom out of the scene real quick that way we can get a good look at our HDRI image and our Sun is probably in this area it's where the brightest is and hopefully we can see some differences here so here's the U let's change it to 10 and see if it does anything which it doesn't look like I think we need to is there a preview button no okay well let's change it to well we can just gradually change it this way and it should update in here there we go now it's changing so here's our we're really low on the atmosphere here you typically leaving this at zero is a good idea unless you have a, a specific HDR image set up for it so if it has like a floor um, that you want to use it'll have a like this view will have a floor let me show you so here's the floor you can see where the shadows are being casted right here but when you look underneath it like right in this area it doesn't look like there's a floor and I can even go below it like this and you can still there's just no floor is what I'm trying to get at and typically if you change the V the V amount right here it'll bring that floor up and that can look wrong so if you want your Sun in the azimuth of your scene you just change it here and this will also affect your shadows and if you look right here you'll see it 
So I'm going to change this to maybe 8.6. And you can see the shadow slowly changing. Maybe I need to make more changes than that. All right, so the sun's getting right above us. In any case, you can kind of see what that does. It just changes the location of your image. And if you have a sun, it'll just change the location of the sun pretty much. So I'm going to go ahead and set the scene back up as best as I can. Oops. There we go. Oops. Too much. I want there to be some light coming in right there. There we go. We have some shadows being casted on the ground here. So let me change this back to one and see if that changes anything. Just a little bit. What about zero? Didn't really change at all. Wonder what's going on. That's interesting. It's supposed to be changing. So the, the shadows will actually change with the location of the map. Uh, but it's not looking like it's doing anything. You can map the upper atmosphere um, or hemisphere only and that will also give you different results. So it's not going to map the, f the ground plane. So this might be a good one to use inside of a scene like this where you don't necessarily have a ground plane that you see. Um, you can even use a separate reflection map if you have one and a separate illumination map if you have one. And you can uh, apply uh, lens flares as well if you wanted. And that pretty much uh, explains how to use an HDR image inside of view. So now Cinema 4D. So I have my scene loaded in here and I, I have to have it loaded or else it wouldn't have worked in Indigo. But anyways, um, here's my scene loaded. I'm using the same thing that I was using inside view and inside of Indigo. Um, and if you don't already have a scene loaded up, with a sky object, you're going to want to do that and then follow along. But what you want to do is go to this um, floor plane right here or floor object and you just click and hold and then choose sky. And that's going to put a sky in your scene. But now we don't have anything on the sky. It's just this basic object. What you want to do is create a new material. So if you down here, just go to create new material and make sure you have that new material right here selected double click on that and um, uncheck color and specular and check luminance and under texture right here click on the three dots and open up your atmosphere which is right here and there we go you don't have to worry about anything else just keep the brightness at 100 keep everything else the same or at defaults you don't really have to worry about anything else um, and we're good to go. Assign that material to your sky and now we have it assigned to the sky. Uh, one more thing we should look at is go to render and then edit render settings and um, choose well, I guess we can uh, I guess we can just use standard but go to effect and add global illumination and we will keep it at uh, Irradiance Cache. It will be the best one to use for outdoor scenes. Actually, you know what? Since we're not outdoor, let's use Quasi Monte Carlo. <clears throat> and you, there are some presets here. So if you want to, we can do interior. Let's, we can do um, interior high. And I guess I got it mixed up. Irradiance is going to be the good one to use for interior. Um, but I'll just keep all these, the, the you know, default for the preset and I think we're good to go we can add other ones here if you want but not really needed I just want to throw that in there we'll call that good and I'm just going to set up my scene so it's a little bit more squared with the couch and we will see what we can do Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and render this. I think it's this button, render view. This might take a while, especially with this scene, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. And here you go. Uh, well, I think this is still, I don't know, maybe this is done. Yeah, it's done. Took about a minute and 13 seconds. Looks really good. Um, obviously, it's not perfect. We're just using one light source, and that's our HDRI. 
Um, if we wanted to, we could add more light sources and make it look even more realistic. But I think this turned out rather well. That's how you add HDRI images to Cinema 4D. And let me just kind of go over it again one more time. It's just um, make sure you have your scene loaded. Um, hold down the left click on the floor object or whatever object you have uh, selected as default. And then just make sure you load in a sky. And then create a new material by going to create new material. And then uh, unchecking everything except for luminance and then bring in your atmosphere um, or pff, your HDR image into the texture right here. It seems pretty legit to me. So that's pretty much it. So that's, that kind of shows you how to import HDRIs into Indigo, View, and Cinema 4D. And I'm just curious though. I'm gonna go ahead and select color here. I don't think it's gonna really do much of anything but I'm going to select color anyways, and I'm going to render again and see if that changes anything. Yeah, it changed it a little bit. Um, the lighting right here is a little bit more blown out. Um, and there's a little bit more white to the room. It's not as dark. So it did affect it a little bit. Not much, though. Um, but in any case, that's pretty much the tutorial. Um, I would like to thank you guys for watching. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. Also, I would like to show you guys something. Um, so, this is my website, and I have no selfish plug here. Um, it's pwndesign.com, and on here I have a bunch of stuff for you guys. So if you go to resources, there's um, atmospheres, materials, and landscapes that you can download for free on my website. Uh, I don't charge you guys anything. I'm working on plant models. It's under construction. I just don't have them all together yet in packages. Um, you can also subscribe and look at the blog. I post lots of blogs on different things, as you can see here. Any updates on new tutorials that I make and whatnot come out here. And sometimes I add really good little t tidbits of information and stuff there. So if you guys want to subscribe, you can get updates on the blog. And also one more thing, I have a Patreon project that I it created. Um, and if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a place where you can go and contribute, uh, you know, small amounts of money to your favorite artist, teacher, or project that people are working on. And if I have been any help to you guys, I don't ask for much, just a dollar, five dollars, or ten dollars, and this is a monthly reoccurrence. Um, and what this will do is it'll go towards all of this plus more. So website maintenance, decreased ads, more video tutorials, more resources for free, uh, faster content creation, software upgrades, plug-in purchases, and more so I can continue making video tutorials and resources for you guys. And if you contribute, you'll be helping me out a lot, and that just helps me help you pretty much. Um, this is my Patreon page right here. I already have one person who is donating $10 a month, and this is these are the rewards that he will reap from his donation. Um, and he'll also, at $10, he'll also get all the rewards for the $5, and there's not really anything for the $1, though I st am still adding uh, rewards. But now, since one person has donate, is donating $10 a month, I can remove all the ads from my videos, so no more ads for you guys. Um, I only need $1 a month in order to do that because that's about as much or more than what I generated per month uh, with ad revenue on YouTube with my videos. Um, so there will be no more ads as long as someone is donating a dollar, but um, it's, again, it's not required. You can donate if you would like, it just makes it easier for me to continue making content for you guys. Um, so if you can find it in your heart to donate, please do so. Anyways, thank you for watching. You guys are great and have a nice day.